a Utah Elder gets a figure flashback. Here's your look at the new NECA toys, Predator Elder, the Golden Angel. This is a somewhat flashback of a figure, as Golden Angel, also known as Greyback, was the Utah Elder that encountered Mike Harrigan in the 1997 Predator 2 film. We're gonna get some measurements going. I'm gonna grab the Ultra Measuretron 5000, a ridiculous name for a very cool measuring tape. I happen to name it myself. The figure is 8.2 inches in height, likely because you've got the additional peaks and points at the top of its helmet, which then translates the figure to being a figure that's 20.8 centimeters in height. Yes, as I said, what's really interesting about this particular Predator is this is the same Predator that's featured at the very end of Predator 2. It's the one that hands the flintlock pistol over to Harrigan when Harrigan has defeated the city hunter. This Utah that's then taken and its backstory is really given a full established fleshed out backstory in the in the short story Predator 1718 where it describes how this young Utah would have acquired the flintlock pistol. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Of course, we're going to be looking at the figure itself, a very yellow uh, complexioned figure. Obviously, by the end of Predator 2, Greyback, also known as Gr uh, Golden Angel, is actually a lot lighter in color. It's not this bright yellow. Anyways, we're going to head over ourselves. I love talking Predator. Uh, why don't we start where we normally seem to start whenever we have a look at a new Predator figure, and that is the Plasma Caster Shouldered shoulder mounted cannon that actually will attach to the back of the torso. I'll show you that in a second. It's very nicely decked out here in a very metallic gold coloring, given some little uh, slight details there in some silver, but overall a really neat looking plasma caster. I always really love these. It has articulation where it normally has a little hinge right there and a ball joint up at the top. I draw your attention also to the very top of the cannon. One of the unique traits about this particular plasma caster is that the Golden Angels normally, let me just grab the helmet right here. Normally when you see Predator films, the laser scope sights, the little laser projection that comes out and targets whatever its prey is he's gonna fire at, normally starts, its origin point comes from the helmet. It's usually located on the side. With the Golden Angel, it's actually something a little bit different. The laser is actually located at the very top of the plasma caster. So it literally will target exactly and fire exactly where it's targeting with its laser. A little did you know sort of thing. It's got a little tab point at the top and a little tab point at the bottom. The same place where all these plasma casters attach to their predators. And uh, we're just gonna move the head away I know this is gonna be a short journey because any bit of movement and when I eventually take the heads off, it does come with other heads after all. Uh, I'm probably just gonna take the caster off anyways, but I just wanna show you there's a little, little notch right there. And of course there's the notch right at the top here. So we just hinge that, just tab it in on the bottom and bring the figure around and then it has to tab to the very top. So just sort of stretch it and then when you get to that place, just push it down and it'll firmly plant the plasma caster in the right placement on the torso. Again, this will be short lived because of course we're gonna be going and cycling through the various head sculpts, but for the time being, it's a good preferred look and likely gonna be the way I'm gonna display the figure anyways. I love this particular helmet, just FYI. Let's have a look at the other things, the other trinkets that come included with this figure. He gets not one, but two smart discs. A tried and true go-to weapon for many of Predators. Now this one's neat because it does have two versions of it. One is the unactive, uh, the retracted version, and then one is the extended version in which he's gonna be using it as a slicing weapon or even something to throw. Spin it around so you can see. 
the coloring is actually quite different from this one to this one here. This one gets a little bit extra silver, whereas this one sort of is more relegated in solely just gold. NECA once again has done a great job of adding some additional weathering and, and real dry brushing to it just to kind of make it look a little aged and, like I said, a little bit more weathered. Spin it around, that's probably, there's you go, there you go, that's the best combination, comparison, if you will. So he gets two smart discs. The figure technically does have a space allotment for the smart disc to be attached. I never really find that these attach properly and a little bit of banging usually will result in the disc falling out of place. It is to note actually that on this particular Predator, the uh, Golden Angel, I find like the smart disc for some strange reason seems to sit better on this figure than with others that we've had a look at before. So we'll put that right there. I don't know, it's probably not going to stay very long, so we'll just kind of keep it as is and just hope that it stays in place for the rest of this review. Of course, we also got ourselves the flintlock pistol that has made a couple of appearances in NECA figure form. Uh, fittingly enough, to be given a, and awarded to the, the Elder Golden Angel is the flintlock pistol from the, once again, the 1718 comic story. It's been done here very nicely in brown with some gold accents. The flint lock on the top is slightly done in a darker gray. Again, really nice looking piece, probably as a contender for something I'm going to be displaying with the figure. Uh, the figure has a couple of interchangeable hands because currently, as it stands right now, those hands ain't going to be holding squats. So he does come with a couple of gripping hands. Normally, like this one here is actually a completely closed fist. This one here, actually, you will do all the holding and weapon handling uh, versus this one right here. Normally, I would say you could simply just swap it out with another Predator figure that you have, but as you could probably see it from the color scheme that they've given this guy, it would be very hard-pressed, you would be very hard-pressed, to swap this hand out with another hand that you may have in your collection. You'll probably see it. It'll stand out like a proverbial sore thumb, if you will. The last accessory, excluding, of course, the helmets, uh, he does come also with the extendable sword. Now this one's pretty neat because what it does have is it has the option for the sword blade to extend out. It slides in, not the easiest, mind you, but it sort of just tabs into place. There's a certain way that it has to go. I had it the wrong way initially. And there's the sword right there. I don't find it stays in place well and uh, applying a lot of pressure, I find it's prone to feel like it's sort of swaying back and forth. Like the plastic is thin enough that if I'm not too careful, it's going to snap right off. Uh, that's what the sword looks like. It actually kind of looks a little bit more like a gun, being that the blade is not the same length as... It's not quite the hilt, but the top portion, this section right here of the sword, does look a little jarring. I know it's alien tech after all, but it does seem a little off-putting that the blade is so thin here and a little broader here. You can display this in its hand as is, or, which you can also do very carefully, take the blade out. Try not your best to break that. Swing the figure around, and he's actually got himself a holster, a sheath that you can slide the sword into, and that just pops into place. And while I was doing that, the smart disc fell off. We'll have to go back and retrieve that. But a nice little placement, a nice little section to store the sword uh, it actually fits more so easier one way than the other. Uh, when you do get it in, though, it does get a little hung up, gets a little stuck. Uh, one side, there is definitely more the stopping point. When you flip it around, you can tuck it in a lot easier on this side, but just know getting it out is a little bit tighter. It's a little bit more of a roomier, less roomier fit inside. I like that there's a storage capability for that. So. It's one of those cases where if you don't have the desire to display the figure with it, you can simply just put it in the sheath located on the back. Okay, so let's have a look at this figure. I love the look of the Golden Angel. It's definitely one of those color palettes that stand out versus some of the other Predator figures that we've looked at before, which traditionally have more of the beiges, the browns, and little specks and flicks of color. Here, though, you've got basically just a punch in the face of vibrant yellow and green. I tried my best to think of what I would describe this as, and as a reviewer that seems to like to use food as an analogy, I came up with a best way to describe what this color is. This is the color 
if you have ever dressed a hot dog and you put mustard and relish on the hot dog and while you're eating it there's always that one blob of it that goes all over your shirt this is the color right here that yellowish green color as best as I can describe it it's kind of like again like relish and mustard mixed together spilled all over that pristine shirt you really didn't think to yourself was ever gonna get stained somebody probably even warned you I wouldn't wear that out if you're gonna be eating I'll be fine you really aren't fine you get you get it all over and everybody notices it for the rest of the night so it's definitely a very much of a bright color uh, liking though the coloring it's definitely unique to predator figures primarily it's all like dark green and light greens on the back more than the yellow present on the front then we get a look at the helmet and boy oh boy do i love this helmet it kind of reminds me of like a bug like an insect perhaps like a cockroach a very hard shelled beetle if you will all these platelets come together to kind of give it a crown if you will the coloring is almost like a gold copper color, which works actually quite well. The recessed areas of its breathing mask are done in a dark black, slightly dark, even a slightly dark red in there, almost the same coloring. Maybe up here, just a little bit darker down below. Some silver accents also added to the sides. The eyes very brightly done in this almost ruby red color scheme. Now, it may be visibly the indicator that the mask is removable. It is not, at least not this part. If you want to remove the entire mask, you want to basically take the head off, and then you can replace it with a couple of various options, like this one right here. Um, I like this mask, don't get me wrong, but I mean, if really good, the option is available, I would more likely be inclined to pick that one over this one right here. The other option available is this head sculpt right here. And while I'm certain it has been reused frequently before, one thing that they did add to the bottom tusk area here, the mandible section, is they gave it a little ring. I like that. The coloring is again that vibrant green and vibrant yellow. The pink actually on the interior of the mouth actually now pops a little bit more than what it normally would. Both the heads actually come also with their own versions of their dreadlocks. So when you are taking the head off, you're not in a case here of taking the head sculpt, the mask off, you're actually taking off the entire head. Now to accomplish that, we're going to go ahead and take the plasma caster off. Guaranteed, it's going to be the first thing that will fall off, not really against its will. Well, I guess it would be against its will if the plasma caster falls off. So I'm just going to take it right off, right off the bat. Um, some nice neat details in there just to get a good gander of that before we go ahead and take pull off the head sculpt just pop that off of the ball joint I have said this on frequent occasions but I'm so glad that NECA has opted to change the way that their ball joint systems work remember back in the day it used to be a big bulbous almost joystick like uh, ball joint now they're seeming to be going with a more slender cylinder and I think it's a lot easier to take the head sculpts off so fine work that NECA has switched over to an alternative in the way of the ball joints. It's still not sadly very easy to get the head in place. You may want to feel more comfortable doing this with the camera off. Uh, you can also heat the ball joint and uh, you can replace that and change out the head sculpt. And again, there's this option as well if you want to go with those desired looks. You very few often times get NECA releases where they give you three interchangeable heads for a Predator figure. Sometimes at the very least, it comes with a removable mask. There's the two masks, once again, side by side. Sometimes it's usually just a case of removing off the mask and the face is underneath, but usually that will destroy something like mandibles, the uh, mandibles sticking out from the face. Just can't work that well when you have a mask over top of it. Um, so usually NECA will give you just straight out interchangeable heads, but three heads that's pretty cool and i'm glad that they gave you those again those are the two helmeted heads in all honesty this one's okay but i like this one a lot more it just has a lot more personality happening to it so for that reasoning this reviewer has decided to proceed proceed with the remainder of this review with the original head sculpt as it should have been intended for right from the beginning and uh, we're going to stick with that 
Some other details on this is the ring of skulls, which I think actually has been reversed on my particular figure. I may have to actually just get that around its arm, flip it around because you can see the skulls are facing the opposite way. I think it's just the way it was attached to this figure. I just have to change that around. Um, usually the ring of skulls and bones are a go-to for most predator figures and uh, this one certainly is no exception. It does also have the bladed gauntlet that extends out to giving you two blades for the price of one. And on the other side, like every other predator, he gets himself the control console. A added bonus to this console is, while it doesn't have the countdown, luckily for the rest of us around it, doesn't have the countdown on the interior of the uh, display there, but it does have coloring on the outside, something that very few Predator figures seem to have. Usually, this is all just painted in one color, and all these extra details just get omitted altogether. He has a traditional skirt, a much larger storage section for that the now missing a smart disc. I know it's on the floor. I'm going to have to go retrieve it. Some additional gold happening in the knees, the shin guards, and then we get ourselves the spilt mustard relish combination for the coloring on his feet. And uh, he does also have the sandals or like the foot flip flops, if you will, on the underside with some peg feet, peg holes on the undersides of his feet. That in a nutshell is the golden angel, a really golden pleasure, golden pleasure. I don't know, we'll run with that. Let's have a look at its posability and then we'll wrap up this review because I know certainly you guys have places you need to go, people you need to see. Head rotates all the way around, it hinges up and down. It also can rock back and forth like that. I always like for the more observing predator to its prey, I like that little tilt in the head, it goes a long way for me. The shoulders rotate all the way around. We're not gonna make the mistake, as I certainly have in the past, of rotating this arm all the way around because right off the bat, you'll see what will happen. That little tubing pop right off. It'll rip right off. So you wanna be very, very careful of that. It's probably nine times out of 10 if you're gonna be picking up a used Predator figure. It's the first thing you'll probably notice that's broken on it. Any bit of rotating the arm out, rotating the arm forward, instantly, instantly makes that a taut cording and it's guaranteed gonna be breaking just like that. Just like that. The bend in the elbow, you get a little bit more luxury happening here. It's a little bit longer, so you don't have to worry that that's gonna be breaking as much, but guaranteed, that's gonna break like that. So we're gonna look at the articulation on this side instead. A double hinge on the elbow, it has a swivel on the bicep. It has a swivel also in the hand. Sometimes it does get stuck around the, the blades, so just be careful of that. You don't want that to get caught and break off in the process. Upper torso ball joint, lower torso ball joint, split on the legs, forward and back, a swivel cut on the top cut of the thigh, double hinge on the knee, and then also has articulation in the foot with, yes, Virginia, there is an ankle pivot as well. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, there you go. That is the Elder Golden Angel, a splendid, if I can use the word splendid, a splendid release from the folks over at NECA Toys. Of course, like I said, you do get the benefits of having, there they are right there once again, the two variations of the head sculpts, one with an additional interchangeable option for a helmet and one for sans le helmet. Personally speaking, again, well, again, I love both of these being included. I'll be more likely inclined to display the Elder instead with the defaulted head sculpt because I really think this is the best of the lot. The Golden Angel Predator was on my radar for a very long time. As soon as I saw images of it surface online, it was a figure I definitely wanted to add to my collection. This one's got some real intriguing colors to it, a color scheme that you wouldn't normally expect to find on a Predator figure. This bright yellow and green mustard remains, if you will, uh, does work quite well for this Predator figure. And even though, again, it does come with a series of interchangeable heads, my preferred look is the one that you've got here, the one that you're looking at here in final looks. Now the figure though, as great as it can be, has some small hiccups, some of which we'll mention and discuss right here in final looks. The big obvious one in the room, the big elephant, if you will, is that tubing that connects the torso to the shoulder pad. This has always been a problem with at least those figures. As soon as they, as soon as you move the arm, that tube will break instantly. 
I've actually had several of the casualties in the Predator toy line for the same reasoning, just simply moving the arm, not realizing the tense nature of those tubes. That one tube doesn't take very much at all for it to rip away from the torso. So be very careful of it. In final looks here, I've got it displayed with its retractable sword, but it's not going to be an arm that's going to move any bit further than what it currently is right now, for fear of all the things I just mentioned, that tube breaking off. Uh, still a great looking figure. If you loved the backstory of this Predator figure, like I said, check out the Predator 1718 comic series. And of course, if you want to see its sole appearance in the films, you can check out the Greyback slash the Golden Angel in Predator 2 at the very end of the film. He's the one that hands off the flintlock pistol. Some good news though is if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, the Golden Angel Predator should be available now in local comic book stores. Uh, as always guys, thanks for watching as you always do. If you haven't done so already, why, you know, why not hit that little subscribe button down below. You can also hit that bell notification. I have some feelings that it is gonna work, but as YouTube always is, and the way that the algorithms always work, the best bet, the best guarantee to miss, to make sure you haven't missed out on anything I've posted up to this point, is to swing on over to the homepage and check out the videos section. Uh, more videos will be coming your way, including some more NECA reviews. So if you guys are into NECA reviews, stay tuned to this channel, because a lot more is going to be coming your way very, very soon. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.